So it seemed like from the feedback of last week's video, a lot of you guys enjoyed the mathematical tuning of my trebuchet and trying to get it to throw the tennis ball as fast as possible. So this week I am going to be trying to improve it even more. Shortly after uploading last week's video, I got a message via Instagram from a viewer about a physics video tracker software. And a huge thanks to the viewer, I can't pronounce your name, uh, for recommending me this software. Essentially, for you guys that don't know what this software is, it's called Fizzlets, I believe, tracker video software. And what it allows you to do is measure a reference distance on the video and then track a point around the video and it will give you, uh, you know, data of the acceleration, the velocity, etc. of the projectile or object or whatever you want to track. So obviously, as I'm trying to optimize my trebuchet, I need to be able to measure the release velocity of the projectile as quickly and as accurately as possible. So this software is a complete lifesaver. It not only measures the velocity and acceleration of the projectile, it also plots them in a nice graph. So I can see at what point in time of the launch, the uh, projectile is at the highest velocity, which obviously is the point of release. Uh, but I can also measure how fast the counterweight's traveling and also how fast the arm is moving. So as I found out last week, it's not all about the gravitational potential energy of the counterweight dropping to the transfer of the kinetic energy of the projectile. It's also about the leftover kinetic energy in the counterweight and the arm. So basically the counterweight and the arm needs to be stationary at the point of uh, release of the projectile. And I call these stall points because it's where the weight stalls and the arm also stalls and then the projectile flings round. Now being able to measure the velocity of the counterweight and the arm uh, on a graph over time allows me to see where these stall points occur and try and synchronize them together. So first of all I want to gather some data on the trebuchet using this new software. So what I did is I carried out the same 15 kilogram counterweight tests as I did at the end of my last week's video uh, both with the non-weighted frame and also the weighted frame. So the frame that will rock a bit and then also the frame that is completely solid. To get the measurements as accurate as possible I moved the camera as far away from the trebuchet as possible and zoomed the lens in as far as possible. And what this does is it removes the depth of field effect so the rear, sorry, the furthest away part of the frame uh, will look smaller than the closer part of the frame just because of the way that, you know, when you look at something far away, it's smaller. By moving the camera further away and zooming it further in, the frames almost line up uh, because it's less of an effect when it's at a further distance. Another thing I did is I made a measuring stick uh, which has 10 centimeter sprayed black lines. Uh, and a total of 1.8 meters long. So I can use this as a reference length for the software, for when I measure the velocity. When I repeated the tests, I did them three times, each with the uh, frame that would rock and then the weighted down frame. And interestingly enough, the velocities were actually slightly different to what I calculated last week. Interestingly enough, the velocities were actually slightly quicker measuring this way, uh, taking the averages of the three launches. Uh, I calculated that the unweighted frame threw the tennis ball at 45.43 meters per second compared to last week's measurement which was 44.56 meters per second which pushes it just over the 100 mile per hour mark at 101.8 miles per hour so I didn't actually have to weigh down the frame to reach the 100 mile per hour mark as well as the non-weighted frame throwing the tennis ball faster than I previously measured uh, the weighted frame also threw it further or faster at 111.1 miles per hour or 49.6 meters per second. Now as you can probably tell from the title of this video I will be adding wheels to the trebuchet and the reason for this is that a lot of you guys commented on my video last week saying that adding wheels to the trebuchet uh, allows the whole frame to shift forwards when the counterweight drops and this adds to the forward velocity of the projectile uh, making it throw further which makes sense because when I look at the unweighted frame launches, the whole uh, frame of the trebuchet rocks forwards uh, as if it wants to you know, slide forwards. So adding wheels should help it slide forwards. There's just one thing that doesn't quite make sense to me because theoretically this shouldn't work. As I've mentioned a number of times, the end velocity of the counterweight and the arm needs to be zero for the most efficient throw. So having a velocity of the frame moving surely would take up kinetic energy that could be transferred to the projectile. For example, if the frame weighed 10 kilograms and it shifted forwards at one meters per second, that's the same amount of kinetic energy that if it was transferred into a one kilogram projectile would go three meters per second faster. So I can either have the frame move forwards at one meter per second 
adding one meter per second to the projectile, or I can have the frame stationary and the projectile having an extra two to three meters per second of kinetic energy. Now, this is only theoretical, but I've been trying to wrap my head around it. There must be a reason why you guys mentioned to put wheels on a trebuchet to improve the efficiency. Like, some people must have done tests for this and, you know, received better results with a trebuchet on wheels. But I don't think it's because of the horizontal velocity of the frame. So I think it's time to add some wheels and do some tests. So here we go, we've got the wheels on the trebuchet, we've got 15 kilogram counterweight raised to the maximum height for release, and huh, 48.39 meters per second, which is slower than the weighted frame, the fixed frame. I then tried two more launches with slightly different release angles on the release pin, and it was still slower. So this is where that physics tracker software is really useful. I essentially tracked three of the major components, uh, one being the projectile, uh, the second being the counterweight, and the third being the end of the arm. So basically where the release pin is, the very tip of the arm. It then allowed me to plot a velocity time graph uh, for each of the components and compare them to one another. And what I realised is that the stall point of the counterweight, basically the lowest velocity of the counterweight, and the stall point of the arm, the lowest velocity of the arm, did not synchronise with the release of the projectile. In fact, the counterweight stalled, then the projectile was released, and then the arm stalled. Which if you compare to the fixed frame, uh, the counterweight would stall, and then about 0.02 of a second later, the arm would stall and the projectile would be released at the same point as the arm stalled. So now with adding the wheels, none of the stall points lined up with the release of the projectile. So how do I fix this? Well, the only variable left to change, that can still be changed apart from the release angle, is the length of the sling. So I ended up shortening the sling a bit. What I found out is that shortening the sling results in the arm stalling earlier. And I basically had to shorten it enough so that the arm would stall at the same time as the counterweight stalled. And here's the result I got. Yep, that was a tennis ball going 0 to 124 miles per hour in under a second with a peak acceleration g-force of 167 g's. Wow. So how does this compare to the other launches? Well, at 55.4 meters per second, it's 5.8 meters per second faster than the solid frame, the weighted down frame. Which, going by the idea that the movement of the frame adds to the velocity of the projectile, must mean that the frame travels forwards at 5.8 meters per second because that's the difference in the velocity. But the good thing about this physics tracker software is that I can measure the speed of the frame. And it turned out that the maximum speed the frame traveled forward at was 1.2 meters per second. So where's the extra 4.6 meters per second coming from? Now, as I've said before, uh, probably a bit too many times, is that it's all about synchronizing the stall point of the counterweight with the stall point of the arm and the release of the projectile. If you can get all those three things timed up, you can get the most efficient trebuchet launch. Now what's interesting is that the stall point of the counterweight is determined by when the counterweight arm lines up with the main arm. And because the counterweight wants to drop vertically, if you watch footage from the fixed frame, the counterweight drops as vertically as possible, and when its counterweight arm lines up with the main arm, uh, that's when it stalls. And as you can see with the fixed uh, frame, the main arm is at a slight angle when the counterweight stalls. However, with the wheels, it allows the main axle to slide forwards above this point where the counterweight stalls. So instead of the arm being at that angle when the counterweight stalls, it's now vertical. So put simply, adding wheels to the trebuchet delays the stall point of the counterweight until the arm is in the vertical position which just so happens to be 
the same point in the arm stalls. This results in a gravitational potential energy to kinetic energy of the projectile transfer efficiency of 68.4%, which compared to the fixed frame of 61.2%. So what have I learned from all of this trebuchet experimentation? Well, I've learned that adding wheels to a trebuchet does in fact make it throw faster and further, but not for the reason that I was initially aware of. Sure, adding wheels to my trebuchet allowed it to travel forwards at an extra 1.2 meters per second, but that's only a 2% increase in horizontal velocity over the total 7% or 7.6% increase from synchronizing up the stall point of the counterweight, the arm and the release of the projectile. There we have it then. Now you know why adding wheels to a trebuchet makes it throw further. Not because the frame moves forwards, but instead the synchronization of the stall points with the projectile release. How many times am I going to say that? Basically, it's pretty important. That's the end of this week's video. I hope you found it interesting and enjoyed it. If you did, it would be greatly appreciated if you could leave a thumbs up. Uh, I obviously took the research that other people had gathered that adding wheels to a trebuchet does in fact make it throw further, but for a different reason than you might initially think. Uh, so just thought I would throw out this information that I've gathered. Uh, might be of some interest to some of you that are building trebuchets. If you're new to my channel and enjoyed this video, please click subscribe to follow more future projects. A huge, huge thanks to all of my patrons for supporting me. You guys make these weekly videos possible and I honestly couldn't do this kind of research without you. Your support makes everything possible. So if you wish to support me and see any behind the scenes information, etc., uh, head over to my Patreon page and uh, yeah, you can support me for a dollar a month. Thanks once again for watching and I'll see you next week. Uh, let me just end this video with uh, a few more launches. I think uh, seeing a tennis ball go 0 to 124 miles per hour is pretty entertaining. See you next week. Goodbye.